Okay, so oceans of data. I'm going to give you some insights into just some things that I've been involved with where, where we take a lot of data and we try to turn that data into information, information that helps us be more transparent about our, our processes, how we're using the oceans, and, um, and uh, make smart decisions. So, so we all know, um, hopefully here, why the oceans are important. Here are a few more fun facts to get us primed. Uh, maybe you don't know that actually half the oxygen that we breathe is actually generated thanks to um, all the green guys in the ocean. So um, yeah, quite important. Oh, and you saw the other ones. And, um, and so we have these competing uses, whether it's uh, ship strikes like we had blue whales off the Channel Islands or Deepwater Horizon. Um, or fish, an entanglement from fishing gear, or low frequency sonar, and ship shock trials, or even environmentally friendly applications like wind farms. Um, we have spatial conflict. And so this is the end product of uh, some of the work that I was doing with Duke, with many other folks. But here we are looking at a prediction of where, where whales are. And we see the track lines where the survey effort was and the point observations of where those animals were seen in a predictive map. And this is how it gets built, is basically that data about where we've seen critters, and then environmental data that we can associate in a statistical model, and then we predict up across the seascape where we find these things, and, uh, and then maybe a go or no-go kind of decision about where human uses could happen. So where does this environmental data come from? Um, you're used to you know, boats and planes and uh, gliders and buoys and uh, a lot of uh, these applications use satellite data. In satellite data, we can see things like the temperature of the surface of the ocean. Um, we can even, with lasers, look at the height of the ocean and infer the geostrophic current. So here are some derived products where we look at the movement of eddies and the description of sea surface temperature fronts. And these are what aggregate prey and what visual predators tend to use to uh, to feed upon, so they're good indicators of where we might find these guys. So then the biological data, so we're marrying the environmental data with the, the observational data. Again, we, we use boats and planes for visual observation. We also attach these uh, telemetry devices, so GPS track the guys. And then we look at onshore for nesting sites. And then how we represent these on a website, so the in, environmental folks have been pretty good about getting their act together with organizing data. And on the biological side, it took a, a lot of more recent effort. And you see all these different data types represented here. Now on a website, OBIS CMAP. So that's where I got my start at Duke back in 2002. And now we've got uh, a bunch of records now online and available, three and a half million records with all these data sets going way back. So we can start to now use this archive of data to go back and build that predictive map so we can manage these uses properly. And it, and um, so there's a sort of a, a marrying between the predicting side and then the archiving side. And there's some technical glue that uh, allows this to happen related to uh, geospatial web services. And um, yeah, so, so we're there now with the spatial decision support system. And uh, the end result or goal is to have this predictive map, cloudy with a chance of whales. So, uh, you know, we want a whale cast. We want to predict where they're at now, where they're going to be in the future, and so we can uh, uh, manage our human use of the oceans to minimize impact on endangered species. So that's one project. And now I'm going to just give you a little background on the, this other project that I'm working on now with NCs is, so what is a healthy ocean, bigger picture? And this question is really important for the Ocean Health Index. Um, because it, you might think it's a pristine ocean, but the fact is no part of the ocean is really untouched by our human uh, influence. And that's why we're in the age of the Anthropocene. So humans have to very much be a part of that uh, solution and create um, what we need is this healthy ocean now and in the future, sustainably delivering these, um, all of these goals here that we're seeing. So. Um, there are things that, you know, we get our food from the oceans, it regulates our climate with carbon storage and coastal protection. We have economy and, and cultural values, and we also have regulating services like the biodiversity and clean water. So this is a very audacious effort to catalog where we're at with the oceans, and this is based on these reference points that 
we can define the average of all these different goals and how each country scores and then globally how we score. Um, and then the further out the pedal is to the edge of the circle, the better the score. So you see the gaps of where we want to improve. And that's each of those goal scores is, this is more calculations, but the idea is it's not just now, but into the future. And we have uh, mappable human pressures that inflect the future downward, but we also have notions of governance and that bring it back up with resilience. And so what we're doing is trying to not only do the each country, but then within country, show smaller use cases uh, so that within the realm of actual spatial management uh, that happens, uh, these countries can do a better job of uh, improving the health of their oceans. So uh, my main task has been to build a toolbox that this is the, the front shot of it that allows you to explore all the input data layers and uh, construct your own layers for your own country or region of interest. And the end goal is to hopefully improve um, our overall ocean health. So this was a, a quote from a Senegalese conservationist addressing the UN that is great. In the end, we conserve what we love. We love what we understand, and we understand only what we've been taught. So. Uh, creating that transparency and uh, uh, is, is the goal. Thank you very much.